In my opinion, Hizmet represents Islam by walking the walk, not just talking the talk. It's easy to talk. It's easy to throw hadith at someone, or mention an ayah, or do the tamtama. somehow inherent. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina wa Rasulina wa Habibina Muhammad. My name is Ahmad Rahab. I'm the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Chicago, known as CARE Chicago, and an activist in various areas of social justice, including immigration, and refugees, uh, where I sit on the boards of both the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, one of the premier advocacy groups for immigrants in America, and Refugee One, which is one of the uh, larger service groups for refugees in Illinois. The Hizmet Movement, uh, which simply means service, is a movement, not an organization, um, composed of volunteers, people who choose to be a part of this movement out of their own free will, and that I think is the strongest element about this movement is that people are inspired into it. They're not conscripted. They're not uh, recruited. They are inspired into wanting to be part of this movement, which is a movement for social change through three elements. Education, believing that ignorance is the enemy. It isn't a particular group of people. It isn't a particular, particular faith tradition or race. To the contrary, these views are shunned, ignorance being the common enemy of mankind. Poverty is another problem, and so there are uh, groups and charities within the Hizmet that help alleviate suffering that arises from po poverty all over the world. And then lastly, dialogue, because basically dialogue shatters the myths that silence creates. And so when we shine the light on each other's faces, we see the features. Instead of living in dark silhouettes and shadows, we begin to understand the realities of who we are through this dialogue. So the Hizmet works in these three areas. In my opinion, top notch, both in terms of content and aesthetics, whether it's the schools or the charities or the interfaith and global fellowship organizations. Hoj Effendi, or Mr. Fethullah Gulen, as he is known, Hoj Effendi within the Hizmet, is, in my opinion, one of the most important leaders in the world today. Uh, because his leadership style is so unique, yet so effective. Um, he teaches through example, um, not through just words or through um, forcing someone to do something to the contrary. Um, he inspires people into change, and he does that through living the example himself, which is the prophetic way. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, you know, transformed the world through living the values that he preached. Hoj Effendi, uh, is an enigma of sorts. He's a simple man, he's a modest man, he's a humble man. From his beginnings up until now, he started off um, you know, helping the students and uh, cleaning uh, their rooms and their beds. And you know, he was a very humble individual. Until today, he still dresses in the same way and has the same personal property. And yet, he is at the top of a movement that is changing so many uh, problems in the world. And he hasn't lost the sense of humility. Um, he, I think, is a leader because he changes the individual first. He builds the individual. Most organizations and most movements and most leaders are looking for followers. Hoj Effendi is not looking for followers. He's looking to create leaders. Each person becomes a leader in their own life, in their own families, in their own communities. A leader for change, a leader for positive contribution to society. And by not being afraid of building these leaders, as most dictators or other leaders in the world are afraid, they only want submissive followers. He has created a movement of confident, capable, effective change makers. And he has used Islam and the value system of Islam as the motivator. And I think this is a wonderful thing because we don't have too many positive examples, unfortunately, in the world today when it comes to Muslim leadership. Um, we are plagued, unfortunately, with on one side extremism, on the other side, um, 
the sort of liberalization that goes to the other extreme. And so we have in Hoj Effendi an example of someone who understands the material world, who understands science, who understands aesthetic beauty and the beauty of the material, of the physical, of the school, of the book, of the website, uh, of the video, of the film, uh, of the center, of the office space and how important this is to the human eye and the human soul. But he doesn't stop there and puts even more emphasis on the beauty of the content, the spirituality, the intention, the drive, the sense of self-efficacy and, and, and humbleness before Allah, that Allah is the one who owns success, that Allah is the one who owns everything we do. And he always reminds his followers, whenever you're successful is the most dangerous time because that is the time when you think you have made it, you are someone, you are the reason, and always remind yourself at the moment of success that you are more vulnerable than at the moment of failure because of this. And there are so many life lessons that he has given people through his waz, through his lectures online, that I think the average person who's not even a member of the hizmet, um, whose heart is open to wisdom and spirituality, cannot but be affected by this message and hopefully have their lives transformed. The most important single contribution of the hizmet is breaking the myth that the East and the West are somehow at loggerheads, somehow inherent enemies, which is a thought or an idea that is born out of the 20th century ideologies, um, but has its roots in much, much older times uh, emerging from the Crusades onwards. And it has really culminated in many um, confrontations between the East and West and bad blood between the East and West. And on the Muslim side, it is true that you know parties are guilty of this uh, with these quote-unquote Islamist ideologies and nationalist ideologies that emerged in the 20th century, also obviously on the West side with Islamophobia and with uh, xenophobia and with colonialism and all of these other problematic ideologies and behaviors. And so this is the sort of world we found ourselves in, this notion that the East is, is, is its own animal and the West is its own and they're completely at odds with each other. Hoj Effendi came along and without losing the Islamic identity, and this is the most important point, remaining authentic, completely authentic in the Islamic tradition and the Islamic scholarship, he was able to reach out and explain and show uh, through dialogue, through education, through interaction, that there's no such thing as a schism between the East and West, that this world is one, human beings are one, their problems are one, they cry in the same language, they laugh in the same language. It is people who make these differences between us, they're artificial differences, and that once we're able to um, cross and overcome these differences through humility, through open-mindedness, through dialogue, through cultural exchange, through trips to Turkey and trips to the United States and vice versa, through education, we find that we have much more in common that we ha than we have in difference. And it isn't to brush aside the problems that exist. These are to be dealt with, but they are then dealt with in the frame that we are one humanity rather than two sets of humanities, which is an absolutely fallacious idea. In my opinion, Hizmet represents Islam by walking the walk, not just talking the talk. It's easy to talk. It's easy to throw hadith at someone or mention an ayah or do the tamtama, you know, the subhanAllah, mashallah, all the time, uh, you know, or dress in a certain garb that looks pious. Not to discount people who look and, and act in this way. Some of them are very sincere and wonderful people. But if that is the extent of what we think is what Islam has to offer, we're completely wrong. And what the Hizmet, I think, has done for me as an observer is it has shown the real depth and the real value of the Islamic ethics and the Islamic character and the Islamic spirit, that it is about intention, but also about action. It is about knowledge, but also output and productivity. It is about contribution. It is about change. And like you are in a corporation, and this is what has pained me in the past. You look at Motorola or Coca-Cola or Mercedes, and these corporations, they have very high levels of performance. They have high levels of aesthetics. They have high corporate you know, standards, um, ethical and uh, work ethics, et cetera, et cetera. But also they measure their success. They reward their success. And they penalize you know, failure by avoiding the routes that led to failure, etc. But when it comes to Islamic work, we find that, oh, intention is all that matters. And you can hit a brick wall, things can backfire. Instead of helping, you're actually, you know, making things more difficult. There is no process of measuring success. Um, we, Islam, is not a product. You know, Islam is obviously 
for us Muslims, a way of life. But it is no less important than a corporation, and it surely deserves better standards of work. What the Hizmet has done is brought high standards to Islamic work. It has measured its success. It has said, when we do something wrong, we will do something differently to get it right the next time. And it is all for the sake of Allah, and that's the most important thing. What really, really inspires me about the Hizmet is not just Hoj Effendi, although he is the main inspiration, as the example, a um, uh, living example of the value system that we ought to follow, alhamdulillah, but every and each individual at the bottom, if you will, the teachers, the workers, the activists. Whenever I run into any of them, whether in Belgium or in Australia or in Turkey or in Egypt or in Kenya or in Chicago or in Los Angeles, anywhere in the world, it is as if I'm meeting the same person in terms of the same level of humility, level of hospitality, level of welcomeness, level of productivity, level of, I hate to say it, but poverty, <laughs> you know, the sense of, you know, they're not looking to amass money, they're looking to give away what they have and, and work for the sake of Allah. This very humble and sincere, um, widespread character is, I think, what makes the Hizmet so incredibly unique. And you can't, you can't beat that. You can't beat the human spirit when it has nothing to lose. It has everything to give. When you make a movement like this, it will move mountains. It is more wealthy than billions. It is more powerful than armies. And it is out to create peace. It is out to act against hate and aggression. It is a wonderful thing for the world. And if more people knew about it, I think they would be in love with it just the way I am. What I think is unique about the Hizmet versus other Muslim movements around the world is that people who work in the Hizmet always assume that they don't know until they learn. They ask questions. They listen. They want you to speak more than they want themselves to speak. They want to listen more than they want to speak. That makes them very good students. I think the real power of the Hizmet is in that its activists and its workers are really good students. When you're a good student, you get the right information. And when you get the right information, you're able to, hopefully, with good judgment, make the right decisions. And you're able to contribute and be more successful in your contributions. Um, the problem with many movements, not just Muslim, around the world, is the sense of um, self-righteousness. That I am, I've reached a certain level of piety, I've reached a certain level of knowledge, I know what I need to do, I know what needs to be done, you need to listen, you need to follow, and as such they come into new territory, new cultures, new terrain, and rather than understand the audience and the specifics of the culture, they begin to act within their old comfort zones. And what this creates sometimes is a situation that backfires, where people are turned off and put away. And if you look at the prophetic example, um, every prophet, we are taught in the Qur'an, every prophet had certain criteria. One of the key criteria of a prophet is that he speaks the language of the people that he is sent to. And this doesn't just mean German in Germany or Japanese in Japan or Chinese in China or Arabic in, in Arabia, but it also means the cultural specifics, the um, context of the language, the ideas, um, the politics, the humor, uh, and the social constructs, that needs to be understood. Hizmet is very good at understanding and listening and uh, thinking and analyzing and not just acting out in the same comfort zones. I think uh, that the Hizmet movement is making a tremendous contribution to world peace. And I think that uh, Gulen ins has inspired them to, to be concerned about world peace. The Hizmet has done more for the image of Turkey around the world than the actual State Department of the Turkish government. Through the dialogue work, through the schools, through the charities, the Turkish flag is no, almost always there.